Alrighty, how's it going everyone? I'm Jonathan with Boston Collectors, and today we'll be unboxing and reviewing the Deluxe Gen Urso from Rogue One by Hot Toys. On the front of the slipcover style casing, we have the name of the figure and product info. As for the back, we have the warning, store locations, and legal information. We also have the Star Wars embossed logo resting just below the artwork decorating the front of the sleeve. As mentioned earlier, the slipcover sleeve reveals a whole new packaging for the figure. On the front of the box, we have beautiful artwork of Jyn Erso and a golden reflective appearance to the Star Wars logo. Hot Toys went above and beyond to create something a little bit more premium for this release. While the box isn't textured, it looks absolutely beautiful under any form of lighting. As we open up the box, secured with the polished bone-like latch, we're greeted with what the art insert usually would be. In this case, the art box made up for it tenfold. On the opposite side, a description which reads, Putting behind a checkered past by lending her skills to a greater cause, Jyn Erso is impetuous, defiant, and eager to bring the battle to the Empire. Used to operating alone, she finds higher purpose by taking on a desperate mission for the Rebel Alliance. If you're enjoying what you see so far, don't forget to like and subscribe for future content. With that said, let's go ahead and continue. Right out of the box, Jyn Erso is equipped with a pair of relaxed hands. Similar to what we saw in our previous review of Jyn, there's nothing different here. Next, we have a pair of fists. Something that was missing with the other release, actually, but I'm very happy to see them included. We also have a pair of C-gripping hands. Both don't share the same opening, though, and you'll see that momentarily. The left-gripping hand is used more for the comm link included, whereas the right allow for more room to hold the hard drive. When not in use, you can store the comm link and the included code cylinder in her vest pocket. Going back to the hard drive, this piece is detailed to the nines. The depth and detail work is absolutely beautiful and I can't help but pose her with it. Next up, we have a pair of quad binoculars exclusive to the deluxe version. The blue UI indicative of what we saw in the film is also present. I like the pearlescent appearance to the lenses myself, but the overall build is really nice. Not to mention the weathering gives a bit of texture to the overall build. We also have Jen's kyber crystal given to her by her mother. It can fit around the neck of the figure after removing the portrait. This one's definitely staying on for me. For the next accessory, we have a baton. This piece is articulated and come with an attachable piece we'll discuss shortly. The left C-gripping hand is also used to hold this rather than the right hand. So if you're aiming for more of an action pose, you're in luck. After removing the detachable plug on the baton, you can insert the extended piece included inside. From here, it's up to how you choose to pose her either in a simple character pose or something a little bit more dynamic if it suits your display. If none of those are of importance, the ring on the baton will allow her to store it on her belt. Lastly, as far as hands go, we have a pair of trigger hands. These will be seen quite a bit due to the weapons included. Speaking of weapons, out of the box we have Jin's A180 blaster pistol in its basic configuration. In typical Hot Toys fashion, the detail work and paint application is second to none. Basic configuration, right? Well, the A180 is versatile and we'll discuss that shortly. But first, make sure the scope on our weapon isn't swapped the wrong way. Due to the way the pieces are keyed in, you could accidentally do what I did after this section. I caught it during the editing process and figured I'd share it as a heads up. I spent way more time trying not to break the tiny pieces and figure out what went where, so forgive me. 
Included with the deluxe version, we can alter the pistol for more of a shotgun configuration. After removing the pistol barrel, you'll want to attach the central piece to the pistol. From there, attach the included muzzle piece and you're done. The pieces are a bit nerve wracking because they're extremely tough to piece together, especially with bigger hands, but when it comes together, it looks solid. For yet another appearance, we can slot the stock onto the back of the pistol. This is by far the hardest piece to deal with, so patience is needed. Again, when it's finally on though, it looks really good. Finally, we have the sniper configuration. Not to be confused with the baton attachment, this piece will have three notches rather than the two on the baton piece. Remove the muzzle from the previous shotgun configuration and slot this piece in its place. Now that you're done, you'll have a fully kitted out sniper rifle, which is probably the cooler appearance apart from the pistol. At least for me. I wish Hot Toys would have configured the attachment keys a little bit better. I spent more time trying not to break anything and having all these tiny parts around to still mess it up. Regardless, there's a rewarding feeling when it's completed. Properly. <laughs> if that's too much for you, you could also holster the A180 pistol along with the baton on her belt. As for the final weapon, we have the E11 Blaster Rifle. It's a standard rifle included with her release and it look and feel pretty decent. Unlike the DC-15A Blasters, the stock extend beyond its grip. I also like the paint application and articulation on this piece. So much so, I ended up having her hold it in the display. Moving on, we can now add the included scarf to the figure. We'll need to remove the portrait before applying it though. While there is a little wiggle room, it isn't meant to go over her head. After a little futzing, apply the portrait back to the figure. Wiring doesn't exist in the scarf, but because of the fabric, it'll naturally fall in the right way, at least for me. The instructions mention being able to pull the scarf over her head, but I've tried everything and it just doesn't work. Even when inverting, which is unfortunate. Uh, that's okay for me at least, because I prefer the around the neck appearance more, but I would have liked it to work out. Now to prep the figure for the poncho included with the deluxe version. Before doing so, you could have her in your display like this if you wanted. As for the poncho, the application is relatively easy. Slip the arms through the back and feed them through the sleeves once it's fitted properly on the figure. From here, you can add the comm link and code cylinder to the front pocket. While the stitching might appear as if it's a smaller pocket stitched into a bigger one, it isn't. As for installing the bandolier, check for the insert on the right shoulder. I personally like to eyeball it and get a good feel for it before installation. I also found it easier to feed the top of the bandolier in first. It's the longest part of the piece, so I recommend it. Once you're done, clasp it in and you're all set. In order to equip the breathing mask, you'll need to remove the portrait and simply place the mask around her neck. We'll talk about the headpiece in the next section, but when it all comes together, she looks great. I personally like the fully kitted outlook when she's all set up. The colors are muted and she's packed with so many tiny moving parts that it make her feel like a tiny human straight out of the film. 
The hood on her poncho is usable, but it takes a bit of futzing for it to maintain a natural look. Without the bandolier, I think it works. If you wanted to, you could add her scarf, but it looks a little congested for me personally. If all of that is too much, you could simply take it back to basics. As for the base, we have the usual suspects. The tinfoil nameplate with her name and Star Wars logo. And the darker Venator style flooring for the top. Jen's not flying anytime soon, so a crotch holder was included. Like the majority of the Rogue One releases, we have an additional base topper in the form of a premium multi-textured sticker. On the left, we have Jen Erso's name written in Orbesh. Now that we're done, find a pose and you're set. Don't forget to like our video if you haven't already. It helps with growth and will be greatly appreciated. As seen with the Imperial Disguise Jyn Erso, which we'll link above for you to check out, the portraits are practically the same. The hair is tied in a realistic way in a small knot with a few flyaways on the sides. In my opinion, do a great job of hiding her neck seam. As for the 360 spin, you'll notice maybe two differences. Her eyes aren't looking off to the right and there's almost a noticeable seam line in the hair. This exists with the Imperial Disguise Jin, and I didn't notice it before. The hair doesn't come off on that version, but it does for this one. Hang tight though. I have to say, for a figure made back in 2017, I really like the look of Jin's hair. It's got a good flow to it, and they layered it really nicely. And with more controlled lighting, Felicity Jones comes to life as Jin Erso. to say, something about the Imperial Disguise Jin suits me a little bit more, surprisingly enough. That's not all though, because Hot Toys included an additional swap out accessory, which pair well with the poncho seen previously. To start, we'll need to remove the magnetic hairpiece. Similar to Director Krennic, it's as easy as keying the hat into the magnetic keyhole. Again, Hot Toys spared no expense when it comes to the detail. Everything seen here is shaped in plastic and painted to appear as clothing. They really took their time with this release, and you can see the love and attention to detail found throughout just the hat alone. Beginning with the boots, they appear as if they're pleather, but they're actually shaped by plastic. On the pants, there's quite a bit of tailoring done to really nail the on-screen appearance. From the stitching to the smaller tassels and the components found around the knees. The only pleather component on this figure is the belt. It's a widely known issue for collectors in harsh climates and probably the only issue you'll have in this piece. Regardless, it's simple and it looks really good kitted out with her weapons holstered at her side. Moving up, we have her shirt design. Again, this figure really does feel like a masterpiece in hand. I can't imagine how arduous it might have been to get the tailoring right to nail her on-screen appearance. From the greeblies on her jacket to the pockets and smaller bits and bobs found along her vest. As for the body, it's got everything you could want apart from a swivel at the thigh. There's some give, but not your typical break. Apart from that, she is a masterpiece of a figure in hand. As for comparisons, we have Imperial Disguise Jen Erso. We also have Director Krennic. And last but not least, K2SO. The deluxe version for this release is definitely the way to go, 
For everything included, this is a collector's dream, regardless of the smaller annoying bits I mentioned earlier. While I did have a problem piecing together the gun and the scarf knot wrapping around her head, I enjoy posing her and felt involved with getting everything right. If you're looking to purchase this piece from the secondary market, I'd suggest the deluxe version for sure. With that said, I'd be a fool to rate this figure anything less than a 9 out of 10. I had fun and I haven't felt like this since the Bodega Cat Miles release. With that said, we're going to leave it here. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for future content. As always, it doesn't matter what we rate the figure. If you like it, we love it. Thanks for watching.